all know that the hymn Ode to Joy comes from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, but you might not know how much of the music that we sing comes from the concert hall. Editors have taken works of classical composers and arranged them into congregational songs. As you'll see, composers did much more than just write hymn tunes and church music. In this episode, we will look at composers who wrote operas, chamber music, symphonies, and everything in between. In the last episode, I mentioned that New Englander Lowell Mason collected excerpts from popular composers like Handel and Haydn. The oratorios and operas of the former were immensely popular, even after Handel's death. Both famous and obscure melodies were recycled as hymn tunes. Such is the case of the tune Christmas, which in some hymnals is set to the text while shepherds watched their flocks by night. The melody is arranged from an aria in Handel's opera Siro. Decades after its premiere, the chapel royal organist Samuel Arnold adapted the melody to a metrical psalm. Arnold made the first collected edition of Handel, so he knew the potential of many tuneful arias. Though this particular aria is quite obscure, its hymn version was eventually paired with a Christmas text, itself a hymn by the famous psalm translator Nahum Tate. Handel's most well-known hymn tune comes from the 1746 oratorio Judas Maccabeus. It is the melody of the chorus, See the Conquering Hero Comes. In adapting the music, a French hymn actually came first. Swiss author Edmund Louis Boudry wrote A Toi la Gloire, and it was not until 1923 when the Englishman Richard B. Hoyle translated it as Thine Be the Glory. In 1798, Franz Josef Haydn completed an oratorio that tells the story of creation. One chorus quotes the opening of Psalm 19, The heavens are telling the glory of God. Many hymnals have adapted this particular chorus to fit similar creation texts. Perhaps the most famous hymn by Haydn is the tune Austria. Haydn wrote this as a tribute to the Holy Roman Emperor Francis II. The melody has a long and complicated history, used prolifically in musical and political contexts, though the church has long sung it to words by Englishman John Newton. Felix Mendelssohn had a knack not only for integrating Lutheran melodies into his works, but also composing ones that sound just like them. Such is the case with his cantata for male chorus and brass orchestra. Festgesang is nicknamed the Gutenberg Cantata because it was performed for the 400th anniversary celebration of the printing press. The second movement, Vaterland in Deinen Gauen, features a festive noble melody by Mendelssohn. In 1856, the English choirmaster William Cummings published an arrangement that pairs this melody with a poem by Charles Wesley, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. As we mentioned in the Wesley episode, it was originally titled Hark How All the Welkin Rings, though by the end of the 1700s, it was altered to the title we know today. Interestingly, Mendelssohn never thought his melody could work with the sacred text. Rather, the melody is best suited to something secular. Of course, the hymn was arranged almost a decade after his death, so Mendelssohn's intentions had little to do with the hymn's popularity. Arthur Sullivan is best known for producing operas with William Gilbert, like Pirates of Penzance. Though Sullivan wrote many tuneful melodies in his operas, he strictly forbade publishers from arranging them into church hymns. Instead, he made extra money by composing hymn tunes for various English hymnals. These include Noel for the Christmas song, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, and St. Gertrude for Sabine Baring Gould's poem, Onward Christian Soldiers. In fact, he incorporated this hymn in his very last work, Te Deum Laudamus. It's commonly called the Boer War Te Deum because it was written to celebrate the end of the Second Boer War in 1902. Motives of Onward Christian Soldiers appear throughout this work, and since its premiere, this hymn has accompanied many important civic events. The Planets by Gustav Holst has enjoyed international success since its premiere in 1918. The middle section of Jupiter, the bringer of jollity, contains a heart-wrenching, majestic tune. 
Several years later, Holst adapted it to fit the patriotic poem, I Vow to Thee My Country. Many hymnals also pair this melody with Michael Perry's O God Beyond All Praising. Hubert Perry also wrote original tunes for the latest hymnals. His unison setting of a poem by William Blake is perhaps his best-known piece of music. It's been popularized ever since its creation in 1916 by Edward Elgar's orchestration and its use in the BBC proms. Another popular hymn comes from a now-forgotten oratorio. Early into Judith, the soloist sings the aria Long Since in Egypt's Plenteous Land. Decades later, a music director at Repton School in England used this melody for an American Quaker poem, and this is how we get the hymn tune Repton. Like his colleagues, Rayfon Williams contributed a number of original tunes for the latest hymnals. Though agnostic, he contributed a lot of church music and was musical director for the new English hymnal, an Anglo-Catholic rival to hymns ancient and modern. In fact, he later spoke of it as highly instructive. I now know that two years of close association with some of the best, as well as some of the worst tunes in the world, was a better musical education than any amount of sonatas and fugue. From this project came original tunes like Down Amni, named after his birthplace, and Sine Nomine. The hymn Come My Way, My Truth, My Life is a transcription from his five mystical songs. These are settings of poems by George Herbert, scored for baritone, choir, and orchestra. The fourth movement is a baritone solo, and hymnal editors have used it as a congregational song. So far, we've looked at concert music from Germany and England. To conclude, let's look at the most distinguished composer from Finland. Jean Sibelius was an extremely prolific composer in orchestral, keyboard, and vocal genres. Finlandia is a symphonic tone poem from 1899. It depicts the struggle of the Finnish people, whose sense of national identity was overpowered by Russian rule. Towards the end, a serene hymn emerges, evoking the sounds of a rustic Finnish folk song, though Sibelius did indeed write it himself. The tune is paired with a number of texts today, including this moving poem by an 18th century female German poet. In the next century, the Scottish hymnist Jane Borthwick crafted an English rendition. Oh, my love.
and joys and this fall. 